So if you are going through this question, you are going to notice uh, the differences uh, on the second diagram presentation that we are given with what we had from the previous question that I explained uh, from the hands-on textbook. Uh, if you are to consider that, uh, remember this was our second where we're given this as negative, positive, negative, positive and the currents being taken in the negative direction, which we explained, which I actually explained on this part that they gave us that uh, we are going to have this assumption. One assumption, it's another assumption that can be made is that we can assume from the onset that the current will flow from the negative terminal of the voltage. And we also talked about arguments that are yeah, can be not uh, that can be taken. So if you are to consider this one is from the TVET series, and this is the presentation of our second diagram, which is from the normal way that we are actually used to in our presentations. We know, guys, this is what we are used to having our voltage uh, positive this side, negative, and we see the current in that direction. This is what we are used to. So when you are given questions in an exam, whether it has been presented in this way that we had from our previous way of our hands-on textbook, use the way that I presented there. You work out your questions, the way that it is following how the currents are presupposed. They already given you the flow of currents. They are the ones that they have given you the flow of currents. So your assumption now is on the diagram that you are given. When given from this, like what we had from the ends on, you make your assumption now to be the current flowing this way from the negative. That is what they are assuming there. You work with the assumption that is there. What are they assuming? Here, what are they assuming? The currents from the positive. That is what you work with. That is what you work with. So this time we're going to work from the positive. So we're already given I1, I2 and entering this junction, that's I1 and I2, I1 plus I2. All right. So this is uh, what you're going to answer this question. So as you can see, guys, this is just a repetition, only that the presentation is the one that I wanted us to see. So you're going to consider our loop one and this being our loop two, exactly the same way that you took your loops uh, in the previous case, only that you were taking them in the negative direction, which is something that you're not used to, to take them like this. That is how we took our questions. So you have to be careful. The presentation that you have at the end is hence the one that you we have to assume to use. Also, you have to be under that assumption. You have to be under that assumption as an individual. You have to assume also the way that they are presented. All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, loop number one, we're going to take from A, B, E, F. Uh, a, B, E, uh, F, back to the point A. This is our first loop. Uh, as we do understand, we're going to work with the voltage drops. Uh, the sum of their voltage drop must be equal to the supply. So the sum of the total, the supply, must be equal to the voltage drops. And we've got a source voltage, which is one in this loop. We are going to this loop, this one. There's only one source, which is seven volts. So seven is equal to the voltage drop. Uh, in this part, if you are to consider from A to B, this is the same part as from E to F. Uh, this is the same part here, the same current that is flowing. So there we are going to consider six and I1. So the 6I1 plus, you move on from B to E. We are moving in the same way the current is presented and the loop is moving in the same direction. So that is, it's going to be positive. So that's 20 into I1 plus I2. So that's it. This will give us 6I1 plus 20I1 plus 20I2. So considering... Uh, the like terms, we are going to have I1 and I1, you add, so 6 plus 20, which is 26I1 plus 20I2. So that is going to give us what? Uh, our first equation 
All right, so this is straightforward. Uh, 26 I1 plus 20 I2 is equal to a seven. So we have got this as our first equation, which is just direct like that, okay? The second loop, just like uh, what we had in the first loop, we're gonna consider. So I'm gonna start from C to B to E to D, back to the point C. So that's C, B, E, D, back to the point C, okay? There is a voltage source that you are given, which is 12. So 12 is equal to, okay, from C to B, this is the same uh, movement that we have from E back to this. It's flowing in the same way. So we're just going to consider 10 times the current I2. So that's 10 I2 plus from B to E, same direction that we are moving. So that will be a positive again, 20 into I1 plus I2. So as you can see, the same way that we worked the previous way, uh, the previous question is the same way that you're going to use only the presentation on your diagram is the one that has changed. So you make assumptions according to the second diagram. That's your assumption is supposed to be according to the diagram now. So 12 is equal to, let's expand uh, this other side and see what you're going to have. 20 times I1. That's a positive 20 I1 here. 20 times I2, which is 20 I2. So let's collect. Uh, the like terms, we only have I1 there. So those 20 I1, uh, I2, there is I2 here. And we also have I2 here add. Uh, that is going to be 30 I2. So that's we formed an equation. So you're going to just have this as 20 I1 plus uh, 30 I2, which is equal to 12 as our second equation. So we are back to the solving, guys. So that is it, guys. We can see that now the latter part is just direct so we can solve and uh, determine the current the voltage whatever that you're given there which is a crossword resistor three so we, let's solve our equations all right so we're going to take our equations the first one uh 26 i1 plus 20 i2 is equal to seven uh, so this is what we had from our first equation, guys. I'm just going to remove this so that we do not have disturbances here. Our second equation, uh, that's 20 I1 plus 30 I2, which is equal to 12. So this was our second equation. So we can solve uh, these equations simultaneously. Depending with the way that you want, are you going to use elimination method or what? So using elimination method, uh, like I said, we can simply interchange uh, these and eliminate whether you want to eliminate I1, whether you want to eliminate I2. So if you wanted to eliminate I1, you're going to multiply by 20 here, by 26. All right, this time let us just try to eliminate I2, guys. We've been eliminating I1 since uh, this time. Let's try to eliminate I2. So to eliminate I2, just going to interchange 30, multiplies on top, 20 multiplies this. That's how you just eliminate. So you multiply by 30 on top, by 20 below. Like I said, you can even reduce this. So you are simply going to multiply by what? By three and two. So you can eliminate I2. You want the part of I2 to be the same. So it's three times 26. You can multiply that, guys, uh, which is 78. So you're going to have 78 I1. 3 times 20, which is 60. I2 is equal to 3 times a 7, which is 21. By 2, 2 times 20, which is 40 I1. 2 times a 30, which is 60. I2, 2 times 12, which is 24. So as we can see, the part of I2 is exactly the same. So we can eliminate the positive, positive. So we can simply subtract. All right, so let's subtract uh, 78 minus 40. What are we going to obtain? That's uh, 38 I1. 60 minus 60. That will give us a zero. If L, if there's nothing there. 60 minus 60, meaning to say I've eliminated this. That's a zero there. So it's equal to 21 minus 24. So 21 minus 24 is going to give us what? Uh, that is going to give us a negative 3. 
So with this, we can determine the value of I1, simply divide by 38, simply divide by 38 both sides. So that means you're going to obtain the value of I1. So I1 was going to give us a negative uh, 0 0.079 uh, amps, which is just like uh, to say it is an opposite assumed direction. It is because of the assumed direction that was on the diagram. That's why it is a negative. But we also saw that uh, uh, on that uh, previous case, we had a negative. It was I2, which was a negative from the previous example that we had. So both circuits, they will give us negative. This one, it will give us a negative on I1. That one, it gave us a negative on I2. You use your values as they are, all right? So with I1, you can substitute into any one of these equations to find uh, the value of I2. So in this case, I'm just gonna substitute into equation one. So using equation one is 26 I1, that's 26 times I1, we have the value of I1 minus 0 0.079 plus 20 I2, uh, which is supposed to be equal to seven. So that's an equation. Multiply these two guys, you're going to have something like negative 2,054 plus uh, 20 I2, which is equal to seven. Transpose to the right-hand side, that's gonna be a positive 2,054. So that's obtaining uh, 20 I2 equal to the sum of these two, which is 9,054. So you add these two and simply divide by 20 both sides. That was going to give us uh, the value of what? The value of I2. And I2 was going to be uh, 0, 0,453 amps. So we have got uh, the value of I2 in that case. Remember the question is for us to determine the current I1 plus, uh, the current where this is flowing, where this R3 is, the load resistor R3 here. So the current here is I1 plus I2. So now you have to add the, uh, the ones that you obtain, the currents that you obtained, I1 plus I2. That is gonna be our current there. So current in R3, that's I1 plus I2. So I1 plus I2, uh, I1, that's negative 0, 0.079 plus I2, 0, 0.453 amps. So we're going to add, uh, this was going to give us 0, 0.374 amps. So that's it. We've got the current uh, flowing here in this part of our circuit I1 and uh, I2. Uh, that is given, or uh, that one that we just calculated now here, I1 plus I2. Uh, so this is equal to 0, 0,374 uh, amps. So if for the current, with this current, we can calculate even the voltage drop that we asked there. So the voltage drop across this resistor that can be written as VR3 is simply current times what? Resistance. So the current they're flowing is what? Supposed to be current and resist resistance. But which current is flowing? That's I1 plus I2. So I1 plus I2 times the resistance that we are given. So I1 plus I2, you calculated this. You have got the value uh, 0, 0,374. So it's going to be 0, 0,374 times R3, which is 20. So that is going to give you uh, the voltage drop across this resistor. So the voltage drop them, uh, that's 7,48 volts. That is what you're going to have. The power through the load resistor R3, this resistor, so remember I said power can be calculated from voltage times current. Power can be calculated from voltage squared over resistance. Power can be calculated from I squared R, depending with which part we're going to use. Since we already have current and resistance, meaning to say we can use the power, power across R3 is gonna be current I squared times resistance. So it's current one plus current two squared times R3. We have this I1, I2 added together, which is uh, 0, 0.374 squared times R3, which is 20. So that was going to give us 
uh, the power, which was going to be 2,798 watts. You can use voltage and current. Since the voltage is there, voltage times current, you obtain the power. You can use the voltage and resistance, V squared of R. We still obtain power. So I want you to use any of the given formulas of determining or calculating the power. So guys, this is how our circuits can be presented depending with the textbook that you are given. So you might wonder to say, how is it that the previous question we were working with the negative uh, uh, connection, like working from the negative, this time we are working from the positive. So from the hands-on, they gave us a valid reason that we can use, that we can use that uh, uh, assumption that we can make of working with what? The negative terminal. If you are given them from the positive terminal, you work them as they are from the positive terminal, the way that they are presented, you work with that assumption also. So this is what we had, guys, uh, till we meet again.